This is Sarah, and I'm going to be showing you Al Gadoo, which is this awesome 2D simulation or motion simulation software that I found while I was surfing around on the internet the other day. Um, I was trying to physically, in real life, build this mechanical chicken leg, and I mocked it up, printed the parts, screwed it together, and it kind of works. I need to tweak it, but instead of reprinting everything, uh, it occurred to me that there might be something out there that does this and simulates it, and there was. Uh, this is cool software. Uh, without further ado, uh, there are all these tools down here. I'm going to take the rectangle one and draw, I don't know, basic robot arm with the parallel bars and everything. So just like that, that's a done. That's kind of my shape right there. Uh, obviously this has to have hinges at the points where the rectangles intersect, kind of like screws and washers. Uh, this software has, uh, what are they called? Axles. So this is your screw and washer. So that I can put these axles at the points where the bars intersect. So next thing I'm going to do is select this whole thing because this isn't really the angle I want it to be at. I'm going to go ahead and rotate it so that it's... that'll do. I'm going to move this up so that it's off the ground. And the next thing I'm going to do real quick is make these not quite parallelograms because, I don't know, they should kind of fan out here and get narrower towards the bottom. It just helps with the motion. I don't really understand why that is, but I just know that it does. So now I'm going to go ahead and re-pin these down with new axles. I'm going to go ahead and completely get rid of this piece because I don't need it. Uh, what I ultimately want is some sort of cam here, but uh, before I add that cam or wheel or motor, or I guess it's not technically a cam, I don't know. Uh, I'm going to pin this down, this arm right here, with another axle, and I'm going to go ahead and press this play button down here, which basically makes gravity go into effect. So if I do that, like, choo, that happens. That's because the only thing holding it up is this, which is pinned to the background. So there's a back button, and I can hit that, and it goes back to whenever you didn't screw it up. And I'm going to make that wheel, or that motor, next. I'm going to pin that down. And I'm going to go ahead and put one of those axles in the center of the circle. And when you do that, you get kind of a big looking one. If you right click on it, you can go ahead and designate it as a motor, which is what we want. And I'm going to set its forward toggle key as F. Check the box. That way, now when I hit play, and then hit F. It's going to motor. Oh, but it doesn't like that. Move this out a little bit so it doesn't collide. Now let's try it. So when I hit F, oh, ah, motor is not strong enough. Doesn't have power. Ah, nope. Okay. Make it more strong. E. Give it more torque. I don't know, that sounds good. Deal. Let's try that. At play. Oh god. It's maybe a bit too fast. I don't know. Let's slow it down. That's good. Once you tweak it, and get it right. It's more or less doing the leg thing that I wanted it to do. It's not perfect, but you can go ahead and from here tweak the lengths of your 
pushrod bits or your whatever you want to call them. And I don't know, I think what I might secondarily do is add another wheel going in the opposite direction that this piece is connected to that might help it look a little bit more like a bird or a raptor walking, which is what I want. And once I added the second wheel and kind of changed the size and the speed, I got a little bit closer to the movement I'm looking for. Like, these parts still aren't really moving as much as they should, but I'll mess with that and I'll probably get that working sometime this weekend. But it's definitely not that. God, this is awful. What is that? It's just a floppy tentacle. Mm. <laughs> cool software. Download it.